All right, continuing our discussion of the JITA LCD object. Thus far, we've already talked about grid systems, and we've talked about drawing commands and arguments and one type of shape, and we've also looked at the order of operations that we have to use to actually send the JIT.LCD a, a proper message and get it to output for us. In this video, we're going to take a look at a way of animating simply some basic drawing commands. Okay, so we've got our JIT.LCD over here, four planes, char data, 320 by 240 is our size. And we're displaying this in the JIT.P window. We learned that our arguments for shapes are left, top, right, and bottom for the position within the, uh, the canvas. And then optionally, if we wanted, we could specify a color for each of these shapes, so red, green, and blue values here. So if we wanted to send multiple messages, multiple shapes, and we, can, we want to be able to, let's say, use a toggle to turn on the drawing, right? How, do we, how are we doing this? So we actually need to send a bunch of different frame oval, or frame in this case, I'm doing squares, rectangles, frame rectangle messages over and over again. Um, at, a, at a fast pace. So what I have set up here is a, a pack object that actually will send the output same as we have over here, a message, right? The shape command and then our position and color. This pack object is going to send out that message over to the JIT.LCD. Um, but what we're doing is we are changing the position and the size for each of these randomly. So what we have is a random 320. So the left position of the shape is going to be randomly determined somewhere between 0 and 319. And same thing, 0 and 239 for the top position. And then for specifying the, uh, the what is this, the right and the bottom positions, instead of using a random number, what I'm doing is I'm increasing the value by a random size. So I'm increasing the left position by somewhere between 0 and 49 pixels, and then I'm increasing the top position by somewhere between 0 and 49 pixels. So I'm taking this out and, and actually adding it and then making that be my bottom position of my square. I'm packing this all together with my shape command, frame rect. So I could change this if I wanted a different shape, maybe frame oval. And there's uh, something else in here that you may or may not have seen yet, and that is this object called trigger. So we, we probably know we turn this uh, toggle on, the metro is sending out a bang every 50 milliseconds. Uh, but then th that's going into a trigger object, and the trigger object is the thing that really helps us make sure that we do all of the order of operations properly. So first the message, then the bang to the JIT.LCD. So when we send a bang, or actually any, it takes in other data types as well, in this case we're just doing bangs, to this trigger, and then we put three Bs in a row for the arguments, we're asking trigger to output three bangs in a very specific order. First the one on the right, then the one in the middle, and then the one on the left. So the first thing we do is we send a bang to these random number of generators, which specifies where our shape is. Then we're taking a bang and we're sending it to the pack, which actually creates the message output from pack for the hot inlet, packs it together with our shape command. And then finally, we send a bang out here, which goes straight to the JIT.LCD to ask it to update. So we can walk through this. Let's go ahead and clear. If I just do this one bang at a time, so here's a circle. You can see this is the position of it. Here's another circle all the way at the bottom. Here's another circle. Also down here at the bottom, I have a swatch object, which by the way, because the JIT.LCD is expecting 8-bit, uh, char data 0 to 255, we have to switch our swatch 
to output old style in the inspector so that we get 0 to 255 instead of 0 to 1. And I could change this color now with the swatch object. So I don't know. Maybe we'll do blue. And maybe green. OK. So that's looking pretty cool. Um, let me just do one more thing because I have a couple more minutes right now. And this is easy and cool. So I can turn this on, and I can change the color by clicking each time. Or if I wanted to automate the color choice also, that's relatively easy to do. I'm just going to take another uh, stochastic object, this drunk object here. And we will choose uh, 255 with a medium step size of 20. And I'm going to make three of these, one for red, one for blue, and one for green. Just stick these into my swatch. And then use my existing uh, metro object here to create a new color each time I'm drawing a new circle. So we can add an argument here, a new B. And this time, we can use the first a bang output from our metro to ask for a new foreground color from the swatch. And it'll reset the color, then reset the position, then reset the shape, and then finally output that. So let's see. Let's clear that and see what this looks like. Whoa. So we're getting a series of random colors. Now, because I use the drunk object instead of the random object, the drunk object is outputting colors that are based on the previous color that we just looked at. So you can see that we've, we had a whole series of sort of blue-green uh, circles, and then now we've jumped over to pink for a bit. So all these colors are a little bit more related to each other. If you wanted them to be even more closely related to each other, we could decrease our step size so that we're not allowed to get very far. Whoa. No, thank you. Not very far from our color on any given, I think I would learn, but I didn't, on any given new color. So we'll clear that and hit that. So we're, this is going to be gray for a long time because we started in the middle, and all the colors were very similar to each other. Eventually, if we run this long enough, we'll get away from our gray colors as these numbers get higher and lower.